Yo, dog, Kenny Boucher here, next level painting, hitting you up on the literal best of all days. We're coming to you from the Beats Lab in Hollywood, California with an orc tutorial. I'm going to show you that red style. This is the missile launcher piece to the Marauder War Track. This is from Mantic. It is essentially a discontinued model. They brought it out of retirement for us and maybe Orktober. We're going to be giving away scores of these models in the next few months. So what we're going to do is I'm going to jump on this, show you guys two different ways to build up the red and eventually how to make it look all weathered and classic. We're going to start up with some flow improver in the old Pizot, little black and red mix. This is the super easy workup. We're using Mephisto on red and Abbott on black, but anything practically will do here. It is my goal to show you guys a super clean workup so that if you want to do that style of transition red, you can. But eventually we're going to fuck this model up, throw some chips on it. So here we go real quick, base coat. This is a black red we just made. Some companies make amazing black reds, but hey, you can make some black with some red, get the same effect. So a couple thin coats, stay busy in the beats lab. I'm probably going to be doing all the other parts at the same time. Spoiler. <laughs> Once you get a couple of good coats laid down, you can transition into creating a marriage here see we still got some of that black red in the pot we're going to reach back for that mephist on red add a little bit more on top so it's going to redden it up but it's still not going to be truly pure red we're going to bang out some clean transitions we're primarily aiming center mass on most most of these panels and then we're moving around where light light might be more dramatic we're spraying it on there we're not really too focused on light here we're just trying to make these panels look interesting from all angles we're going to keep the trend alive. We're going to keep remixing and marrying more brighter reds into it. Doing several passes, re-intensifying what we've done until we're happy with the final clean red. All right. We've let all that dry. We've got more in the pot. We're going to do a second pass. It's going to get more vibrant. Too easy. Here we go. Pure Mephiston on red. A little bit of flow improver. This is a solid red. UW still has it on lock with reds. Now we're going to create these center mass highlights. We're going to just kind of trace every highlight we already did. We're not trying to undo the highlights. We're just trying to add to them, create some exciting and electric transitions. So you could, like I said, just be like, fuck it. This is the red. I want to, I want to channel this red because it's such an exciting red. And we have done an entire orc project in the past by bringing the reds to absolute 11. Here we go, a little bit more flow improver. Let's mix a little bit of my favorite red in the game, Evil Sun Scarlet. Slap a little bit of that in the pot, brighten it up. Take these reds to 11 right meow. We always like to marry the colors though. Helps with the transitions, eliminates the speckling. And you can get kind of like the reddest red in the game, in my opinion. When you mix a little Evil Suns into it, it's a different level. Booyah. Too easy. Clean transitions. Like I said, we're going over everything we've done. You can already see how bright this red looks, how beautiful it is. You almost don't want to fuck with it. It's just too good. Speaking of which, I was working on the rest of the uh, war trike, the Marauder trike. And now we're going to show you even more of these transitions over these huger flat panels. There's a bunch of exhaust that sits over all this, but you can see how fun a red like this can be to work with. It'd be a shame if somebody rolled up in here and fucked it all up. Just slathered a bunch of wash on it or some shit. So we're going to throw a little thinner in the airbrush pot. A little bit of that gla gloss varnish. Of Vallejo is the one I like to use. And we're going to quickly gloss all this stuff up. There's a reason that we're gloss varnishing it. All right. <clears throat> gloss varnish makes the surface very shiny, very slippery, kind of like glass. Which means if someone were to, let's say, throw a wash on here, maybe like soft body black from Secret Web Miniatures, it would help break up the surface tension and help push the wash into the, the areas you want and, and help wick it away from the big flat surfaces. So we're going to throw a little flow improver in there just to help it flow. And soft body black looks really good over red. I have a lot of experience with this. So we're going to go crazy. We're going to just start dabbing it on. We're going to go insane. Okay, now this is not gonna work if you don't do your diligence if you just slather this on and walk away it's gonna look, look like literal hot garbage 
but you see how easy it is and how much time we have to move the wash around. That's a combination of the gloss varnish and the flow improver in the, in the mix. And we're just letting it find its way into the recesses. And then we're taking our brush, dabbing it off, and we're wicking away the buildup and the staining on the big flat areas. And we're just kind of staying in motion, manipulating it, letting some of it be there, let some of it stain the panels, but more in a streak than a puddle. We don't want any oceans. I even switch paintbrushes that are new and dry so they can act like a sponge to help absorb it from some of these panels. We're just staying in motion. It's actually not very difficult. It's pretty low stress style of painting. This is going to transform all that amazing red. Like I said, if you want to keep that red, go for it. But if you want to go for that OG Orky style, here we go. Soft body black. Secret what miniatures. So now, once we get all this black locked in and it's dried up, it's never going to truly matte down. It stays pretty, pretty shiny. So there are, there are tricks to, you can matte varnish it if you want to, but I didn't even bother. So we're going to take some metal, any metal will do, silver, and we're going to just start trimming the borders of each panel out, kind of with a stippling motion to chip them all out. Go for that iconic old school, every panel is chipped, exposed metal. We're trying to make it look like the red paint is actually paint in the narrative of the miniature itself. So the way we're going to do that is just frame it out and then we're going to use a few basic techniques that we've actually covered before in the past with our chipping tutorials and our battle damage tutorials. You can go back and check those out for more complete details on those. But right now you see just rapid fire, bang it out, stay in motion, try to challenge yourself to move as fast as you can. It's not about the windshield wiper motion with the paintbrush, it's more about the the pointillism, you know, like the dabbing technique. We're just putting little dots, rapid fire, shaping them. We're trying to create nice little angles. We're not trying to overdo it, but we are going to hit every panel. Now, slow it down. We're going to take some uh, orange mixed in a little bit with our evil suns, and we're going to start highlighting some of these red panels. Now, with the chipping effect, it's called, it's basically called like bottom highlight. So like you see the paint, is above the metal the red is so we're actually highlighting right above the red that meets the metal because that is technically raised above the metal so that bottom edge of red catches the the highlight so sometimes it gets really easy to do it in reverse because of the way we're trained you just have to look at the orientation of your model and decide what counts as up because it's super important so we're putting highlights to up and shadows to down. It may be confusing, but like I said, we have several videos that cover this in much more detail, but you can see it's starting to come together. While we have this highlight, we'll just start banging out some of these panels, things that have nothing to do with these chips, just try to create some exciting lines. The effect starts to come into existence once you start adding the shadows, right? So then we're gonna start taking some black and we're gonna start doing the shadow which is gonna be right under the metal on the bottom side. We're gonna start tracing in between some of these panels very thinly, just try to create a little bit more contrast. Basically anything is a wash depending on how you use it. Take your time, create contrast. Trace out all these little chips. You can see bottom chips have a shadow on top on the tops of the reds, they might have a highlight. We're staying on task. There's another one. Here's a top red highlight. This makes the red look on look on top in this situation. So like the way I stay on task is I just always remember the top is the brighter part in this situation. So here we are. We're going to drag a little bit more of a highlight along the tops of these ridges, trying to create that exciting highlight using a little bit of artistic freedom here. There you go. Love it. Paint is three dimensional, especially when it's been painted on over and over again. When you assume in the narrative of the model, the orcs have slathered this red on. So there might be a little texture to it. So that's where the wash is helping us create a little bit of a weathered appearance. Going in there and highlighting each individual panel, creating these chipping effects really helps sell the fact that there might be some like real thick hand slathered paint right over all this it's been beat up the orcs are very, might not be on top of their maintenance game 
or it just might be simply in between maintenances and then they're going to go in and paint all of it over again so there's another big ass built up coat of red that's what i love about painting orcs you can kind of just go crazy find all the edges drop some nice highlight on it we're using just a little bit of troll slayer orange mix in a little bit with our evil sun scarlet to create that highlight looks pretty solid as you can see this is this is a really easy workup i mean it's it's a little time consuming no lie but very fun very therapeutic it's the type of paint job that you can just bang out have a lot of fun listen to an audio book on a saturday or some shit okay so it's time to start painting the rest of the details on this missile launcher so we're going to actually use some grave digger denim this is going to be the base color for the missiles and we're going to work them up to white i just wanted to be on that blue or cool side it's going to look good against that red i always try to think of things like that get a cool color to play off of a warm color make sure to get a solid base coat p3 formula on deck we're going to use some eldritch this is one of their newer colors and we're going to use this to base coat the periscope here or the viewfinder or whatever it is some orky shenanigans probably doesn't even work a couple thin coats now we're going to hit some white mixed in with grave digger denim and we're going to do our second pass on the missiles building it up slowly over that bluish denim color get some solid contrast there all right second pass with the eldritch mix a little white in start blending a highlight from the bottom right up toward the top left and we're just staying in motion moving really fast none of these layers of paint is really dried but it it's okay on a small little lens like this we're just grabbing the black now black top left orientation wise cutting it in go back to the eldritch blend the mid-tone in a little bit if you need to or even mix it in with the black once you get this perfectly framed out black there we go mix it in you can just leave it like that and most people are happy with that but we're going to bring in the highlight again and we're going to keep glazing it in until it's perfectly smooth we're going to mix a little bit more white into the mix we're going to enhance the actual reflective qualities in the bottom right corner make it look its sharpest and most gleaming that pow pure white <clears throat> drop a little dot on it really amp it up there you go too easy and the final exclamation point on this technique is to drop a little white in the in the bottom right but oppose it in the top left with a small dot right in the black that really helps sell the the shine here we go just drop one little dot there these rectangles are the easiest ones to do this technique on so we dropped a little advanced technique in the middle of it all since we're working with pure white let's do one final pass on the missiles glazing a little white in the tips really helps sell that contrast brighten it up love it keep that white on the cool side solid little missile launcher array fits right here there's gonna be an orc gunner we're gonna paint the entire trike with this technique and we're gonna do that live on twitch guys so you're not gonna to want to miss that that's tuesday 6 p.m pacific standard time and fridays at 2 p.m pacific standard time definitely want to catch that it's gonna be october all month long If you like these tutorials, check out Next Level Painting on Patreon. Become a patron of the arts today. We offer early and exclusive access to our videos and a rewards program for different pledge levels. Patreon is PayPal and credit card secure, so you don't have to worry about that. We use 100% of the money to improve our process.